as a woman of color who grew up in San Francisco, I think that for me, I understand how processes and institutions can have an impact and sometimes not the best impact on communities of color. And I think that having my voice at the table is certainly important. I think that's where my passion lies. When the opportunity to lead an office in such a new space came up, I couldn't turn it down. I was with the district attorney's office for a little over nine years. If you include the time I spent as an intern at the office as well as a volunteer DA, almost 13. So I was with the district attorney's office for some time. During the time with the DA's office, I had a really incredible opportunity to serve the community, not only as an assistant district attorney, but also as the director of community relations. What that afforded me was the opportunity to have impact on the community in a really immediate way. It's one thing to be a trial attorney and work to serve the rights essentially of those without rights, victims. And it's really, really rewarding to be in that space and work to further the goals of our office and the commitment that we have as city employees and also advocates for people who don't have a voice. I don't know if anyone is surprised to see me in this role. Maybe people have an impression of what the director of the Office of Cannabis should look like be like, what their beliefs should be. I smash all of that. I grew up in the inner city in San Francisco. My career path has not been traditional, and I don't think that a person should limit themselves as far as reaching their full potential. And I'd say that to young women and girls as often as possible, because I think that's really important. You want to be able to see leadership that looks diverse, because your path is not predetermined. I didn't wake up thinking that I was going to be a prosecutor in my life. The city administrator, Naomi Kelly, reached out and wanted to have a conversation of kind of gauging my interest in this new role. I thought, oh my God, you must not know what I do for a living. And in fact, it was completely the opposite. She had a lot of foresight in realizing that it actually would be helpful for somebody who was not only a former prosecutor, but someone who was interested in shaping criminal justice reform for this city, would be the right person to put in this space. I appreciate the foresight of our mayor essentially leading this charge and being open to how we can be leaders in San Francisco in the cannabis space. I was able to transition my career into the policy space. And here I was able to work on legislation, community relations, communication, and really start to shape some of the ways that our office was going to reform the criminal justice system. It was really fulfilling for me because I could create programs and see those programs impact people's lives. One of those programs was I Am The Change, which took truant youth on a journey through the civil rights movement to meet with leaders of the civil rights movement who fought really hard for the opportunity to have access to education. Being a young person, I think, and understanding that history and that impact helped these young people realize that this was an important thing that they were giving up. Because what we find is that young people who are truant have a really high homicide rate in our city, which is a really incredibly sad statistic, and we wanted to change that. Coming from our community, like, it's, we're predominantly black and brown, you know, so I don't really reach out to other people because I don't feel like they feel the same way we feel. You know, I don't feel like they go through the same things that we go through. I had the great opportunity to work on uh, prison reform issues and criminal justice reform issues. We created a program at San Quentin where we brought district attorneys from our office inside to speak with lifers and talk about how we've all been sort of impacted by our criminal justice system in ways that we could better it. We ended up bringing over 40 elected DAs nationwide into San Quentin to have that conversation. Now we're in a situation where we're inviting the police department. So our formerly incarcerated group that was sort of born out of this program asked for the opportunity to work on a project where we could bring the men in blue on the outside to come in and speak to the men in blue on the inside and start a healing dialogue around um, how the criminal justice system, specifically in San Francisco, impacts community. I was very attracted to this role because there was a component, what we call equity, that was part of this process. And the equity community here in San Francisco is a community that I'd already worked with. Before I took steps to visit cannabis businesses, I thought it was really important that my team have a chance to go inside and speak to men who had been impacted, in this case men because it was a San Quentin, 
because that is the space that we're in now. And that conversation needs to happen so that we know how we are actually making an impact with the work that we're doing. The DA's office, as we were leading up to the legalization of marijuana in the state, we started having conversations on our policy team about what that would look like and what that could look like. District Attorney George Gascon was really focused on being on the right side of history for this. We realized that it would actually be quite a bit of a heavy lift for individuals who had been negatively impacted by the war on drugs to expunge their records. It was really important to him that we figure out a framework that would make it seamless and easy. So the policy team put their, their minds to it, after some time and many conversations, our data analysts on our team, as well as other policy uh, walks, so to speak, on our team, came up with this idea to engage the tech community in assisting this process. So Code for America came on board to help us develop an algorithm that could be used for any jurisdiction across the state. And that was really important to the DA, that we create a solution that could be used to assist all jurisdictions dealing with this matter. The Office of Cannabis is the first office to have a completely digitized application process. And so we worked with the digital services team to develop our online application. Of course, there's gonna be hiccups along the way and we're the first ones to do it, but I have to say it's been one of the most rewarding parts of this job to be able to offer a seamless approach. That speaks to how powerful tech and government, when they come together and work together, can find solutions to really help solve many of our community challenges. The best way to respond to Prop 64 was to retroactively expunge over 9,000 cannabis-related records for the state, for our community here in San Francisco. It really feels like restorative justice coming full circle for my own personal experience. I was in a position in, in, in the past where I was furthering the war on drugs just as my directive, right? You know, And really coming from a place of public safety, that was the mandate and that was the understanding. It's really nice to see that as a society, we're able to look at some of our draconian laws and say, you know what, we got it wrong and let's figure out a way to get this right. I had the privilege of being plopped into an already existing framework. My predecessor, Nicole Elliott, who now works in cannabis for the governor's office, did an incredible job bringing together a group of individuals who are super passionate about cannabis. So the office was created in July of 2017. I came in early 2018. So have been able to see the office's development over time, which has been really nice. I think it's exciting to be in this space, particularly in thinking about Marissa's leadership. Working for this office, it's always um, reminding me uh, for my time when I was working for the Board of Supervisors. So I would say the nature of this job is about the same. It's always fast paced. I learn new things every day. So it's challenging, but at the same time, very rewarding for me. And we get the privilege to work in an office that, that is innovating um, in the sense that we get to spearhead a robust equity program. I'm excited that Marissa came on board because she can leverage her experience as a prosecutor for the last 10 years, especially as this office contemplates enforcement moving forward, uh, but delicately approaching it without replicating the war on drugs. I was hired by Kamala Harris at the district attorney's office. I have to say that I think if I hadn't seen a district attorney that looked kind of like me, you know, or at least it seemed like, wow, that could be a potential path in my life, I may not have considered it. And I think that it's really important that women and certainly women of color in spaces of leadership really do their part to bring on and mentor as many young people as they can. It's super important to take advantage of as many opportunities as they can when they can intern because the doors are wide open. I had very different plans. Plans change and that's okay, but the way that this was shaped was because I took a risk to try something new, explore something, get my foot in the door, show that I was capable because you, you are capable, right? But it was all about leaning in and being at the table and saying my voice matters. And when you become passionate and you find your passion, the sky's the limit.